Hey everyone, Phil Nolan here and welcome to my garage studio. Today we're going to be doing some 3D scanning using Reality Capture and here's what we're going to be scanning. This little lady right here. This is a sculpture that was in my yard for a while until unfortunately her arm broke. So she's been sitting in my basement for a long time. And so we're going to be doing a scan of her. And let me show you what kind of equipment I'm using. So first of all, I've got her on this little turntable that I picked up real cheap on Amazon. And I've marked off 10 degree increments so that I can easily see. I can move it 10 degrees and take a picture, and 10 degrees and take another picture, and etc. And just keep rotating it around. Obviously you can see I'm using a green screen and I've got a couple of lights set up on here, a couple of soft boxes to light up the statue, and then a couple of umbrella lights to light up the background to make sure it's nice and flat and even. And as you can see I've got a tripod here and yes that's right I'm taking all these pictures with my phone that is a Galaxy Note 8. And you know a lot of people might have fancy equipment, I found this works just fine. <laughs> Another piece of cheap equipment I found that works great is actually this Bluetooth selfie stick. Normally you'd stick your phone on here and use it to take pictures of yourself, but I've found that it works great as a remote shutter release. So I can be down here with the camera all the way up here, and I can just move the statue a little bit, take the picture, move it a little more, take the picture, etc. And so I don't even have to be up where the camera is, I can just stay down here doing the rotations and taking the pictures. And it works great. The reason we're shooting on a green screen is that it makes it really easy to just get rid of the background using some video editing software. Now if you're shooting something outside, you're generally going to want to walk around the object but in a controlled studio environment, you don't have to do that. You can just cut out everything except for the model you want, and then it saves a lot of computing power, and it's just really a lot faster for the processing. So I'm going to take three sets of pictures for one full rotation with each set. So first I'll get a set that's down low, something like this and then I'll raise the tripod up somewhere around here and of course I'm going to get the full statue in and I'll do another set of full rotation and then I'm going to come up high and aim down at her and do another full rotation of photos so there's 36 photos for each rotation so times 3 makes 108 photos then if you really want to get some extra detail in certain areas you can come right in and take some extra pictures up close. So I'm going to take some pictures with my friend here and then we'll move on to the software side of things in Reality Capture. Okay, so I'm not going to go too far into depth with the editing of the photos. Uh, we're just basically going to load them into your favorite compositing program. This is HitFilm Express that I happen to be using. So we'll import them as an image sequence. Uh, I've already got my folder here with them. And now we'll just load them onto the timeline. And I'm going to make a composite shot out of them. And let's zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to have to scale it down a little bit. Okay, and then we'll make a mask to get rid of the extra stuff around the green screen. Just going around the very outside. I will need to edit this mask later uh, when the camera changes position. And so now we can come into the effects presets, 2D effects, and our green screen key, drag that on, 
And so now we've got our model completely masked out. Looks pretty good. I'm going to create a white plane. And drop it underneath. And there we go. And then uh, now that that's done, I'm just going to export these out as an image sequence. Okay, so now that we've got all of our pictures set up, here we are in Reality Capture. And you'll notice right away we've got several different uh, options for the layout here. I prefer to use this one with uh, one small panel on the left. And you want to set this one to 2Ds, that's your images. And then we'll set this one to 3D, that'll be our 3D project scene. And then we'll just go to our folder with the images. And I'm just going to hit Control A to select them all and just drag them over into this side panel. And there they all are. Now what you can do is hit Start if you want and that will just go ahead and create the whole thing. But I do think it's a good idea to go through manually with each step just in case you want to save in between or in case something goes wrong, who knows. It's always a good idea to go step by step I think. So we'll start first with the Align Images button. And this will take you know, maybe a minute or so. It doesn't take too long. And I will pause the video here and come back when it's done. Okay, here we go. That actually only took about 49 seconds. And you can see we've just got a little sparse uh, point cloud of our model. And we can see all three rings of photos that I took. And so that looks really good the way it is. And so you can see around here we have this bounding box and everything inside the box is going to be processed. So if you had a larger scene uh, with that you maybe shot outside and you have you know buildings and trees and stuff around it, you would just use the bounding box and it would ignore all of that. But since we did these white backgrounds, you don't even have to think about it. And so before I go further, let me explain. You can rotate around with the right mouse button dragging. The left mouse button will drag it on the horizontal plane here. And then both of them together will pan in the camera view. So let's move on. Next we're going to come up to Calculate Model. And instead of just clicking the button, I'm going to click this little side button down here. And this will give us the option for the quality level that we want. I'm going to start with Preview Quality. And that's really fast. So this is a good example where you can just use this quickly to see if maybe you missed a spot and you want to go back and shoot a few more pictures. But obviously it has some problems and it is not perfect like this arm and there's some holes in the wings etc. So let's go ahead and calculate the normal quality one and this one will take a little longer. So after about 15 minutes of processing this looks a lot better. It's not quite perfect, but it really does look much better. Now we can see there are some areas where maybe I didn't shoot enough pictures. Uh, like for example, it's really detailed down here, but up here is a little softer and, and the wings are a little bit soft too. So what I would do if I really want to get full detail is come up here again to calculate model and we'll set it to high quality and we'll see what the difference is when that's done
Okay, so about 45 minutes later, this is the best quality model we can get. And it looks pretty good. I am pretty satisfied with that. Take a look down here. I probably could have shot a few more pictures down below to get a little more detail down here. But it looks pretty good. So now we have a few more options from here. We can simplify it, which is reducing the number of polygons. Uh, we can colorize it, which is adding colors to each of the individual vertices. And we can also texture it, which applies a real image texture to it. So let's colorize it first. We'll just go ahead and do normal quality. This is pretty quick, so I just go ahead and skip the preview. Okay, so that took about two minutes. And it looks really nice. I'm really happy with how that looks. We got all the textures in there including some little damaged areas like the shoulder and there are a few spots that are not a hundred percent perfect such as underneath oops, underneath of the dress uh, you probably should have shot some pictures under there but in most cases you're probably not going to see that too much So that looks pretty good. It's just about done. Now, like I said, you can simplify it. Although personally, I load these into 3D Coat to continue working on them and doing retopology. And I've found that when you're loading it into 3D Coat, it works best if you keep it as high res as possible, because then it will keep all of the textures looking as good as they can. But depending on what you're gonna do with it, you might be uh, loading it directly from here into a game engine or something. So you might want to simplify it way down. Now before we wrap this up, let's just see how it looks with the actual image texture on it. This tends to take a little bit longer than the colorize option, I think. Okay, so that took about four minutes, uh, which is not that bad. And I think it actually looks even better with the image texture on it. I think you can see a lot more detail. Like if we zoom in on the dress here, the skirt and the, the shirt part of it, and the wings, I think we really see a lot more detail on there. It is almost undistinguishable from the original sculpture. I'd be really happy if I saw this in a game or something. So now that it's done, we can come up here to the export section and we can export a render, which is just a still frame or video animation of it or what you're probably looking for the most is the mesh which is the actual model and you can export as OBJ like I've already done here or you know, PLY which will include all of the vertex color information or a number of other different popular formats so that's it for our tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. And I'll see you with the next one. If you liked this video, hit that subscribe button. Then hit the bell so you get notified of all the new videos on this channel. And then share it, like it, comment, all that good stuff.